If some frail tubercular lady circus rider were to be driven in circles around and around the arena for months and months without interruption in front of a tireless public on a swaying horse by a merciless whip-wielding master of ceremonies, spinning on the horse, throwing kisses and swing at the waist, and if this performance amid the incessant roar of the orchestra and the ventilators were to continue into the ever-expanding gray future accompanied by applause which died down and then swelled up again from hands which were ac really steam hammers perhaps then a young visitor to the gallery might rush down the long staircase through all the levels burst into the ring and cry stop through the fanfares of the constantly adjusting orchestra. But since things are not like that, since a beautiful woman in white and red flies in through curtains, which proud men in livery open in front of her, since the director of devotedly seeking her eyes breathes in her direction, behaving like an animal, and as a precaution lifts her up on the dapple gray horse, as if she were his granddaughter, the one he loved more than anything else, as she starts a dangerous journey. But he cannot decide to give the signal with his whip and finally controlling himself, gives it a crack, runs right beside the horse with his mouth open, follows the rider's leaps with a sharp gaze, hardly capable of comprehending her skill, tries to warn her by calling out in English, furiously castigating the grooms holding hoops, telling them to pay the most scrupulous attention, and begs the orchestra with upraised arms to be quiet before the great jump, finally lifts the small woman down from the trembling horse, kisses her on both cheeks, considers no public tribute adequate, while she herself leaning on him high on the tips of her toes, with dust swirling around her, ha arms outstretched and head thrown back, wants to share her luck with the entire circus. Since this is how things are, the visitors to the gallery puts his face on the railing and sinking into the final march, as if into a difficult dream, weeps without realizing it. I have heard different interpretations of the story, one being that you shouldn't overextend yourself to meet the demands of an audience, and that the audience should understand that the performers are human and not machines. But I wondered why was this performer specifically a woman? And why was the visitor specifically a man? Why was the director a man and the ones who opened the curtains proud men as well? Perhaps Kafka is trying to say this. There's a moment, a moment when the little girl dies. The granddaughter who danced for herself and no one else is void. She cannot exist only for herself. She once had dreams of dancing, ways of being in the world. But when she becomes a beautiful woman and eyes fall upon her, the dreams mold, they cannot exist without the other, the other being man. I wonder if this story is talking about the moment a woman becomes an object that a man desires, the moment she is lusted after for sexual gratification. The woman in the story is unaware of what has happened, but the young man is all too aware. The woman has become trapped in a music box, thinking she is spinning around in circles to music, cherished for her performance, for the value she has brought to the circus but her beauty seems to override her value. Never mind that she has become sick from the demand of these clapping steam hammers, driving in circles for months and months, blowing kisses, pleasing the crowd. He is now looking at a music box. He is trapped inside, unable to break free from this enchanting music. He understands this. He understands that for a moment, the director remembers the woman in his life who he cherishes, like his granddaughter, who he loves more than anything else, and who he knows wants to be seen with hopes and her own dreams. But then he remembers this woman exists within the circus, and there is a demand for her beauty, so he cracks the whip. 
the woman leans into the director after he begged the orchestra to be quiet for her and ordered the grooms to hold the hoops paying the most scrupulous attention. She leans because she thinks he cares about the work she has done to achieve such a performance. Her arms are outstretched and head thrown back, proud of what she has achieved. But the visitor to the gallery knows things are not like that. It doesn't matter if a woman is working on something important, something that could help turn the world if her beauty is what is understood first by the other. A woman should first be seen for her depth and beauty second. But society seems to be trapped in this music box, dancing together in this desire. For the beautiful woman who has worked so hard to perfect her performance wishes to be desired, but the visitor knows that things are not like that. She is condemned to the demand of the steam hammers that clap for her beauty in white and red. The visitor cries because he knows she cannot escape this circus, and he does not want to leave and will continue to sit up in the gallery.